Hello guys, now you're gonna see just a shortcut from our Urbonus Q&A special episode. And if you want to see the full episode, please subscribe to BM+. You will get the access to all of the episodes and other interesting stuff. So guys, what do you think about Mike James' suspension? Well, there's not much to think since we don't know what really happened, but... Uh... I think that there were uh, st there was stuff going on even before this going out with Wayne Bacon. Allegedly, that's that's what's being reported by L'Equipe. Uh, basically, during the past few months, we saw a few occasions where Mike James had disagreements with Sasha Bradovic. We saw Mike James uh, pushing Chima Moneke away from himself in, in Maccabi game. We saw Mike James uh, confronting the referees both on the court and and on the twi on Twitter, so basically, I believe that if if something happened, if if there were some, let's say, uh, disciplinary issues, I think it was just the last straw for Monaco, and basically they decided to suspend him. Although I do expect uh, this to be sorted sooner or, or later, I expect to see him back on the court. Now we have this. Allegedly criminal situation in, in Belgrade. Very so much. is it like March That's Madness in Europe? <laughs> kind of, just on a different level, I would say. Uh -huh. Shane Larkin goes off on Twitter, uh, which I can understand. It's 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 strange to see the one of the top players playing only 22 minutes, but let's keep this for the next week. And then there's Matthias Lasort getting into the fight with Filip Petrushev. Then suddenly Petrushev is invited to the police department. Uh, Red Star, they're uh, making that they didn't criminal do claims about against it. the player and they want uh, him to be suspended until the end of the year. What do you take from this crazy situation well i think he should be suspended at least for some games in in abba league wait he, so he, is he suspended for those 12 games no that no, was not reported yet, not, not yet. yet i'm not saying 12 games ne yeah. not necessarily 12 games would mean he's out for the season yeah, yeah. that's what rester wants actually i mean I, well of course uh, that's what they, want. Exactly. Exactly. they exactly. would like to see him suspended for three years or <laughs> something <laughs> is that yeah, breaking news we're on the podcast, breaking news in gentlemen. the q a podcast yeah. okay matthias lasor suspended for three abali games and fined 10k euros that's I mean, that sounds fair. Yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah, fair. Yeah. It's in the NBA, the best regular season record is 73 wins by the Golden State Warriors in 2016. Please create a EuroLeague team with players and a coach from the current EuroLeague teams, which would get a 31 win in the EuroLeague regular season of 34 games. And 31 wins are mm. a lot. That's very difficult because even the best roster doesn't guarantee you that many wins in the EuroLeague. But first of all, I think we should pick a destination and uh, to me, that would be Maccabi to build this team. Uh, okay. Because first of all, they have the same colors as the Golden State Warriors. And secondly, they're an unbeatable team at home. So that's already a huge advantage if you're going towards 31 wins. And then you're building a roster. So I'm thinking, first of all, the clear idea behind the roster should be without players that suffer on defense. I mean... I want to start from a tall point guard that could be Vasa Mitic, for example, or Wade Baldwin, the way he's playing right now, or Lorenzo Brown, some of these guys. And then I have to go, to go through all the other positions and take physical tall players that can defend multiple positions. And I'm thinking... If you add one NBA superstar to the currently worst EuroLeague team, like Alba, would this make the team a playoff team or even a Final Four team? One uh, EuroLeague superstar. If so, which superstar would do the trick? NBA, no, superstar. NBA, NBA superstar. NBA superstar. So imagine you add Yanis, Luka, or Jokic to Alba. I mean, I do always, they make playoffs? I'd always go with Kevin Durant first of all. Yeah. yeah. No, seeing how he he's injured. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. I'm just, kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's imagine KD everyone's is, healthy, right? KD. I mean, all of these are illegal in Europe, but to me, KD is the best. The way he scorer. was killing it in the Olympics. I mean, they had problems with the roster. And it, it was just down to KD to kill all these games, and he did that. And can you imagine him on the European stage? Who could guard him? How could they no guard one. him? There is not there is not a guy in the NBA can, yeah. who can guard exactly. And then you double team him, triple team him, and if you're if he's going to be surrounded by good shooters, 
Yeah. He's got to create opportunities That's why for I'm others. not taking Giannis. Charlie has a question. I often think about how many young NBA players would benefit from a year or two in yearly competition and curious what you all think about the idea of NBA teams being permitted to pay the salaries of players they wish to stash or assign to yearly teams. I understand the goal of yearly squads is foremost to win and at first glance that might not appear aligned with acting as an overseas development hub for NBA assignments, but talent is talent and this dynamic might also flood you Europe with players they would otherwise never have ex- access to at no extra cost to the team's budgets. It would also potentially level the playing field for lower lower budget teams like Alba Berlin to actually have a chance if they were able to acquire the perfect NBA loan players. Curious for your takes of the pros and cons of this far-fetched hypothetical. Look, to me, that's a great idea. Uh, I just recently did a video about, uh, you know, the... Uh, high school and AAU system in the United States, how they are growing these players. And I think that, and many coaches in the NBA think that these 19, 18 year olds that are right now coming into the NBA with one year of college experience and or G League even experience, they don't have, you know, the fundamentals, the reading of the game. They have the best skill in the world. They are the most athletic guys ever, but uh, anyone can score off the dribble. You know, they are way far away in front uh, against the European guys in, in terms of skill with the ball. But what they lack is the understanding of the game. So this idea, as much mm-hmm. as it's far-fetched and it's you know probably a nightmare to deal with from contracts and blah, 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 that's point, point of view. To me, bringing those players for one year would make a great would be a great move in their careers. Konstantinos, uh, what is your opinion on Dubai team joining the league? Are there economic benefits worth the risk? And finally, which teams would you like to see next year in the EuroLeague? I mean, we've talked about this a lot, I think. And basically the whole point is money. And if you really get more money, more revenue, and the other teams start earning more, people would accept the team from Dubai. But to me, the bizarre thing is that if a team from Dubai joins, there is no basketball culture, no history, no traditions. They would have a big budget. They would sign great players, a lot of American players, I can imagine. Some maybe even uh, mid-level NBA name players. And all of a sudden, boom, this team from Dubai wins the EuroLeague in the very first season. That would feel kind of awkward, bizarre, not right. And even the final four... in in Dubai and that's a great point you know so it would be good until it starts winning <laughs> exactly and it could start winning from the very first season with so, a we, big budget. We, so we are just taking we just want the money they could potentially offer that's yeah you know, but we don't want their very team. potentially but we don't want them winning <laughs> uh, you know and it's probably gonna happen in, not next year but sometime it's gonna happen what's the latest talk Mm, for sure not next year and then it's a matter of discussions and probably the new uh, the IMG contract will expire in 2026 and that's probably the breaking point if they're gonna let uh, Dubai project in or not and the last question by Odrus uh, please select your four playoff matchups which you would like to see that would be the most interesting potentially for all game five series but I chose the ones that are possible Mm -hmm. for this year so I had to put Olympiakos and Partizan in the same matchup. I think that okay. would be a legendary series for the fans' atmospheres. And, you know, last year it was just Olympiakos fans versus Monaco. That This would be, every game would be insane, I believe. And also Jelko being and a jo- former uh, Panathinaikos exactly. long-time coach. No, that, this, this could have so many stories and, and you know, one-on-one matchups incredible this would be my most wanted matchup and it's quite you know it still can happen yeah yeah because uh, sure. partisan have a lot of tough games coming up um the second one is 